wonderful sweaters that you decided to show up with today. Uh, thank you for coming to visit us. It's going to be a fun time today. We're going to do some stuff uh, uh, where you get to participate in music, some stuff from the kids, some stuff from the youth. Uh, it's just going to be a fun old, fun old time. And we kind of have a fun tradition here at Riverside where when we get around Christmas time, there's a special Christmas song that we do. And the reason I don't have a band up here is because you're going to be my band for that song. Does that sound okay? Doesn't matter because you're going to be my band anyway. So if you look under your seats, we're doing this kind of pseudo opera style. You will find a little jingle bell. They're kind of every other one. So I'm going to need you to grab a jingle bell. And we're going to do a song called Come On Ring Those Bells. And whenever you hear Come On Ring Those Bells, I need you to ring the bell. So let's, uh, let's just give it a little test right now. I'm going to give us a little bit of rhythm. And I'm gonna sing, come on, ring those bells. Oh, you guys are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. You're gonna do simply amazing. Well, let's get started with a little, come on, ring those bells. for Christmas. Most people seem to think that getting presents is the greatest thing about Christmas. Other people seem to think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they are both wrong. The wise men came to visit Jesus as a young child and gave him presents. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The bell rings out to guide lost sheep back to the fold, signifying that all are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus is our shepherd, and he laid down his life for us so that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. Hello, 
everybody the good news. Ornament symbolizes the blessings in our lives. Candy cane symbolizes multiple things. If you hold it upright, it looks like a shepherd's crook. The shepherds were one of the few people who were able to see baby Jesus in Bethlehem. If you turn the candy cane upside down, it looks like a J. Jesus starts with a J. And if you hold two candy canes together, it forms a heart. The star is a heavily sign of prophecy fulfilled ages ago. The shining hope of all mankind, the star led the wise men to find baby Jesus. The wise men traveled many miles following the star in the sky. Baby Jesus' birthday's here.
give us a reason for living. We give you all of our thanks this morning. Thank you for this time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, we thank you. of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clean symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in the mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I now know is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love.
Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, just really quick, uh, we are going to uh, play a game. If I could get, oh, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if I could get uh, Lisa and Xander to come on up, and then uh, Joe and Jaden to come on up, we're going to play a quick game. Uh, that, 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 that across, you'll see where this is going, it'll be fun. Uh, but basically, what the premise of the game is, is it's very, very simple. Xander, what you're gonna be doing, and Jaden, what you're gonna be doing, is you're going to be running down to the bottom of the stage, grabbing a present, running back, and putting it in your partner's hand. Does that make sense? So, the idea is here is to see who it is that can hold the most presents. So, whoever drops the presents first, you're out. Uh, and then whoever gets it, y'all have the ultimate bragging rights. Does that make sense? All right, sweet. All right, so, I'm gonna say on three, and then Jane and Xander, y'all are gonna head to the bottom of the stage, all right? One, two, three, go! All right, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh man. And James go for the big Alright, going for back first, back first on the left side here. Strategy. Oh, oh, okay, starting with the back, starting with the back, giving them an opportunity to fail. Okay. Alright, I like the strategy here from Lisa going around the wrist. I like it. Oh, 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 Technically, we have a drop here. We did, but he hasn't dropped the present. That's the present correct. fell, That's but it correct. didn't drop. All right. Okay, so All right. Beginning to see biceps bulging and shaking under the weight. We're getting close here. Oh, oh, man. oh, 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 oh. Did you guys practice beforehand? I don't know if you're right. trying to do that. They seem, no, they got it. They seem like, oh. All right. Ooh, that one looks like it has really dropped something. That there is. So can we just give them a hand? Really, really good. And by now you might be wondering, that was fun. This is weird for church, right? Why are we doing present stacking in church? Well, uh, we're going to have a short time here. We're just to reflect on one scripture today. And Kyle and I were talking, and we kind of decided to do this because um, sometimes Christmas time can feel real heavy. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, maybe you decided to brave shopping yesterday and you felt like, I felt the weight of the presents, right? Or I felt the weight of needing enough money to get the presents or the weight of the Christmas party that I gotta get to, my kids' ballet recital that we gotta figure out. Then we got all the family drama that's gonna be happening on Christmas Day. Christmas time can be really heavy. And sometimes you head into December and you feel like you got all this stuff on your chest and then one thing after another thing after another thing just piles on. And it can be a lot, right? 
Whether you're a grandparent who doesn't have enough money to get, you know, presents for your grandchildren. Whether you're maybe the littlest kid and you're stressed out about school and stressed out about how the family life might not be everything it's cracked up to be. And sometimes during Christmas time, we also remember the people we love who aren't here to share it with us. Christmas is a beautiful time, but it can also feel very heavy, can't it? That's kind of why we started with some heavy presents today with the stacking competition. But you know, one of the things we've been talking about these last few weeks, and what we want to finish talking about today is this idea that Jesus says something crazy in Scripture, and I believe that Jesus means what he says. Jesus says, I I want you to have an abundant life. An abundant life. Abundance means like good, like all this richness, all this goodness, right? But sometimes we struggle in survival mode rather than thrive mode, right? That Jesus invites us to a life of abundance and thriving, but so often we're met with survival mode. Now, when Jesus says an abundant life, a thriving life, he doesn't mean a pain-free life, but he does mean a life that is rich and full of his love and peace and goodness, even in the middle of it. And so we've been talking about how we can embrace certain Jesus ways of doing things that move us towards thriving rather than some of the world's alternatives which lead us to just being in survival mode. And today we're going to talk about how no matter how you slice the world, no matter how you look at your life, the invitation of Jesus is to choose love over everything. And I would argue today that when we decide to make love the thing that we gauge all of our understanding off of, we actually live more free and with less weight, and we can actually step into the life of abundance Jesus has for us, even if it isn't the best scenario right now. So we're going to be in Romans chapter 13. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. It's also going to be on the screen. And it says this. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Has anyone here over ever owed anything? Have you ever owed something to the mortgage company? Have you ever owed something to the bank? Have you ever owed something to whoever takes the student loans? I still don't know. I keep giving them money, but I don't know who actually gets that. How many here have ever had to owe, maybe like you, you like took a piece of candy from like a friend at school or something, and then you had to end up giving it back? Has that ever happened to any of our people here? Yeah, maybe at work last week? I don't know. How many here have ever had to owe an apology? That hurts, right? It doesn't feel good to owe something. Because when we owe something, we feel the weight of it, right? We feel the weight of, I don't want to give up my money. I don't want to say I'm sorry. I don't want to give this thing. I just want to hold on to it. You feel lousy when you owe something. You feel heavy and weighted when you owe something. It's not very fun. And in this piece of scripture, the author who's talking to a church says, let no debt remain outstanding. In other words, if you can get away with it, don't owe anybody anything because I know that it's going to weigh you down. But there is one thing that you owe everybody, and that is to love one another. That to follow Jesus means that all your sins are washed away. That we owed all this stuff because of our brokenness and our sin and our hurt. That the Bible says that uh, we owed what, what, what was deserved was death because of that. But Jesus on the cross writes us a blank check to the amount of however much we charged up on our sin account, right? And so because of that, we can be free. But there's still this struggle where even though we're free because of Jesus, sometimes it's easy to still live with this weight, to still have all this stuff in our life which just kind of muddies things up. But he's saying if you want to live a better life, if you want to live a more free life, a a life that is full of thriving, have the only thing that you owe other people is that you love them. How different would our world look if the only thing you owed me and I owed you was that I was going to love you the best I could? How cool would that be? Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commands there may be, are summed up in this command, love your neighbor as yourself. 
If you have one thing in your life that is the thing you build your entire life on, one thing in your life that is the thing that is the focus of your life, the intent of your life, the biggest thing that you put your time, effort, and energy into, it's love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love your neighbor as yourself, everything else falls into place. It's kind of hard to punch my neighbor if I love my neighbor. You know, I don't just, well, I don't know, some people punch people in love, I guess, but maybe don't do that. You know, if, if my neighbor, if I love my neighbor, I'm not going to want to steal from him. I'm not going to feel angry that he has a boat and I don't have a boat if I love them. If I don't love them, I'm just going to be grumpy and all Grinch-like and all Scrooge-like over at my house. And that's just the way it's going to be, right? But if we decide to love one another, if we decide that every decision that we make says, is this showing love for others? It's going to cover a lot of the things the Bible teaches us. And you know, sometimes we come to the Bible of Jesus and we're like, Jesus, I like you all right. Why do you tell me so many things to do? Why do you have all these high expectations of what you want me to do? But in reality, Jesus is saying, trust me, love me, and love other people. Because everything is going to fall under that umbrella. And can I just be honest that when it's busy this time of the year, sometimes this is the easiest thing to forget. I don't know if any of you have driven around the mall during this whole month. Something happens in me when I drive by the mall in December. Like, something different comes out, and I don't really like it. Because when I'm driving around the mall, and somebody cuts me off, and the guy behind me is honking, and someone's, like, threatening to throw an egg at me or something, I don't really want to love my neighbor. But, you know, sometimes I have bad days, and maybe they're having a bad day, too. And if they're having a bad day, they don't want me yelling at them. They don't want me honking at them. They want a little bit of grace, am I right? You don't know what kind of angry interaction the person at the supermarket had before you got there. You don't know what that family member who you don't very like, like very much is going through. So what if, rather than focusing in on the drama and the anger and the bitterness and all of the rules that we want to follow that seem too heavy for us, instead we just focus on love. You go to grandma's house, how can I best show love to grandma? You're at home during Christmas, how can I best show love to mom and dad and brother and sister? Maybe you know somebody who doesn't have a family this time of year. How can I show love to them, maybe invite them over? What if we lived with less weight this holiday season because we decided to not fill ourselves up with the weight of anger and bitterness and grumpiness and shallowness, and instead we filled ourselves up with love, which is a little bit like helium, it ain't nothing but light. It's not easy, but it is something that makes your life lighter. Because love does no harm to a neighbor. It doesn't throw rocks at the neighbor. It doesn't throw eggs at the neighbor. It doesn't yell naughty words at the neighbor in traffic. Love is the fulfillment of the law. You want to know what Jesus' heart is? It's love. Because the Christmas story is about how he loved you and me so much that he decided to take on human skin and be born in a manger, which was kind of gross. We'll just say it. He was born by cows and horses and all the things that come with cows and horses. He was born to a poor little family in a poor little town and a poor little world. And he saw that everybody's lives were really heavy because there's no way that they could be the people they wanted to be. There's no way they could love the way they wanted to love. They had so many things stacked against them. The pain, the agony, the drama, the grumpiness. It was all stacked against them. And that's the world Jesus came into to say, you know what? I'm not expecting you to love before I show you love. That Jesus says, I'm going to love you wherever you're at. However grumpy you're at right now. However broken you are right now. I'm going to love you right where you are. And I'm going to invite you into a life of love that will transform your entire experience. I would invite you and me, as we're getting closer to Christmas time, no matter what the month has looked like up to this point, let us choose love over all things. Because as we get to our big point on this next slide here, here's, here's the reality. Many things in life can weigh you down. Being mad at people, being bitter at people, being upset at people. Many things in life can weigh you down, but love, love frees you to live your life to the fullest. You want to be who you truly are? You want to live the fullest life you can? Doesn't mean it's going to be pain-free, but... 
If you decide to base it on love, the love that Jesus shows you in his life, his death, and his resurrection, if you let Jesus be the main thing, the foundation of your life, the source of love that fills you up, and you say yes to his love, he's inviting you to live a life to the fullest, a life of freedom, a life where things are just a little bit lighter. Things ain't perfect all the time, but if you have the love of a Savior who died for you, who's empowering you, and showing you how you can love this holiday season, I think you and I can make it. So here's a couple things I invite us to do in light of that. How do we love well this holiday season? First thing I'd say is that we slow down. Rather than speeding up, slow down and enjoy the time with the people around you. Spend time with your family and friends and loved ones. Another thing we can do to offer love this holiday season, uh, forgive regularly. Nothing makes you more bitter and angry sometimes than going home for Christmas. Am I right? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> sometimes that just kind of makes life not so great, right? If we're honest. But what if rather than being angry and bitter and mad and always ready to just have a sharp, harsh word with our family and friends, what if we were to say, you know what, I'm a love by offering forgiveness regularly. I'd also invite you to care for your own body, mind, and soul because you can only give what you got. And if we aren't spending time with Jesus and letting him fill us up, if we're not stewarding our bodies and our minds and our souls well, we're going to be trying to fill from an empty pitcher. Am I right? Has anyone ever had a good glass of water from an empty pitcher? I don't think so. Maybe one of the ways that you show love to others is making sure that you're taking care of them. Spending time taking care of your own mind, your own body, your own soul. Taking care of what God has given you so you can be at your best to love others. And most importantly, be with Jesus. Before you do for Jesus, be with Jesus. Before you decide, I want to do this, this, and this because Jesus wants me to, spend time with him. The reason he came to earth was because he wanted to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you. He loves you. He wouldn't have came down if that weren't the case. The Bible says that God himself is love. It's not just something it does. He does. It's who he is. And maybe the most important thing you can do this Christmas time is be with Jesus. And out of that, let the love that he has shown you infect others. We don't want to infect people with sickness. That's not very fun. I just got over a head cold a couple weeks ago. That's not a very good thing to infect people with. But what if we infected people with love? What if love was so contagious that it just spreads through you, through your family, into your friends, and into the city in a way where people say, there's got to be something behind that, only to find out that it's Jesus. The one who loves you so much, no matter where you are, whether you're this tall, whether you're this tall, no matter how tall you are, how old you are, what you've done in your life, Jesus loves you so much that he came to earth in a manger as a helpless little baby. Knowing that the moment he was in that manger, it would eventually lead to a cross where he would die for you. Wash away your sins so that the weight of it is no longer on you. That you would be free to live the life you were destined to live and look forward to a beautiful future where there's no more pain and the love of Jesus reigns supreme. As we look towards that day, let it impact us in the present that the love of Jesus would move you and me to share again with the whole world. Would you say a word of prayer with me today? Lord Jesus, as we come before you today, God, God, love isn't always easy. Love isn't always very natural for us, God. But God, as we come before you today, we pray that your love would reign supreme. That your love and your, your goodness would be the thing that completely transforms our lives, Father God. Help us to love you with everything that we are. Help us to experience your love with everything that we are, Father God. Help us to really learn what it means to look at the manger, to look at the cross, and know that you love us so much that the weight of sin is no longer on us, God. God, as we come before you today, I know there's some of us here who are thinking, you know what, that sounds great, but he couldn't possibly be talking about me. You couldn't possibly be me, Jesus. You don't know what I've done. But I would contest to you that some of Jesus' favorite people are people who don't have it all together. That if you feel like you don't got it all together and no one could possibly understand or love you, you're exactly the kind of people that Jesus loves. 
And if you want to say yes to him today, you want to open yourself up to his love, that it just involves you saying, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Be my Savior and Lord. And it says this beautiful thing happens, and you're brought from the kingdom of darkness to light, that you have life, that your eternal life is safe and secure with Jesus because he loves you. Wherever you're coming from today, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would speak to us, speak to our hearts, that we would may experience your love, and that we would out of that go and pour your love into others. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you. And it's in your holy and your precious name we pray today. Amen. Amen. As we finish up today, we're going to close with a song. I invite you to, uh, you can sing along if you want to. You can um, uh, just kind of meditate on the lyrics, maybe say a word of prayer. This is all about how Jesus, love himself, came down around Christmas time. Uh, so I just invite you to meditate, sing along with, really focus in on the words of this song as we finish up today.
absent God, but a present God, a God who decided to come down and show his love to us through your manger, through your cross, and through your empty tomb. Let your love fill us this holiday season. Help us to love our friends, our family, our children well, and share your love and your goodness with the world around us, God. We love you, we thank you, and it's in your holy and your precious name that we pray today. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us here today as we uh, kind of have a special time to just have the kids, the youth, everybody involved and just do kind of a fun service really focusing in on the goodness and the love of Jesus Christ. As we finish up today, there's a couple of things that we want to invite you to. Uh, this upcoming Friday, December 24th, we're going to have our Christmas Eve service at 5.30 p.m. It's going to be about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, going to be filled with uh, some creative stuff, some fun songs that we don't normally do. It's going to be a really great time, and I invite you to join us for that. We're going to do our candle lighting. Uh, that's what we do this part of the year to remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Uh, and it's going to be a really fun time, so we invite you to come and join us for that. Uh, the following Sunday, which is December 26th, there's going to be no church. And uh, here's a little bit of the reason why. On December 24th, we're going to be talking about how Jesus is the light of the world. And uh, then we're going to trust you to be the light of the world that weekend. That a lot of people are traveling. A lot of people are uh, spending time with family and friends and loved ones. And that's a great opportunity for you to go out and be the light like Jesus was the light to us. So just want you to mark your calendars for that. I um, also just want to say a quick little plug that uh, if you helped out with the Tree of Joy outreach thing that we're doing, uh, if you haven't brought your present in, make sure to see uh, Karen. She's wearing a wonderful red sweater with a reindeer with glasses on it, if you haven't got your gift in. Um, she's the only one with a reindeer with glasses, so uh, you, you'll, you'll, she'll be out there afterwards if you're, you're ready. I um, also just want to invite you just to connect. You can connect through small groups. Uh, if you've got a uh, bulletin on the way in, you can fill out prayer requests or ways that you might be interested in getting involved. Uh, just invite you to do that. And if you're a regular member here at Riverside and uh, want to worship through your offerings and givings today, you can do that through any of our three stations here or online on our website. Those are all great ways to be able to do that. Uh, and as we finish up today, I want to say a prayer, word of prayer to close us. I uh, hope that you join us this Friday for Christmas Eve. If, if Whether you do, whether you don't, we pray that you would invite, we even invite you to join us for cookies in our back room back there. We call it the gather room or the fireside room. Uh, we got some cookies and we got some hot drinks and stuff back there. And uh, we just invite you to spend a couple minutes hanging around. Enjoy a cookie. You can hang out in the gather room here in the auditorium if you want to, you know, uh, hang out with people or say hi or whatever. Uh, but cookies and some hot drinks are back there and we uh, invite you to enjoy some of that as we finish up today. When you're all finished up, you can head right through those front doors there, out back to your cars and everything. Thank you all for being here. Let me just bless you as we head into this week and uh, then cookies galore. Father God, we come before you today and I just thank you for everyone here, everyone watching online, God, that wherever they're coming from, you love them. May that love change us, transform us, and completely make us people who look like you. We love you. We thank you. We pray that we would slow down and experience you this holiday season, and that uh, in all things, your name would be glorified. We love you. We thank you. And it's in your holy and precious name that we pray today. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You are dismissed, church. Go back and enjoy some cookies. We'll see you soon.